Happy Wednesday, friends. Thanks for joining me again tonight here um, as we wrap up the Advent season together. And while um, our culture and the world start celebrating Christmas in November, even this year earlier, some even before Halloween, um, and a lot of times our Christmas trees stay up, our decorations stay up, even after Christmas into the new year, the church considers Advent and Christmas two separate seasons. Advent is this time of hope and waiting and preparation while we transition from Advent to Christmas, our expectations turn to joy. And so we sing joy to the world, the Lord has come, right? That's what we, that's one of my favorite songs. I have got Christmas ornaments that say that, um, house decorations that say that, and it really is a joyful time. Um, and our, our time of waiting turns to a, a time of celebration. And so as Mary and Joseph were um, waiting, this time right before Christmas was actually pretty stressful for them. Um, they were far from their home. They didn't have anywhere to stay. Um, they gave birth to Jesus in a stranger's stable, right? And so even early in Jesus's life, Mary and Joseph knew that, um, or they learned that King Herod thought of Jesus as a threat and they wanted to end his life. And so they were on an exile then to Egypt where they stayed until af even after King Herod's death. And so even amidst all this chaos and stress, Mary and Joseph and the Christmas story, it truly is a story of joy. And so um, we read when Mary goes and visits Elizabeth, the belly in Elizabeth's womb leaps for joy, even in her old age. And so while she is still coping with the idea of having a child despite her old age, um, she finds joy through Jesus, and then in which Mary finds this new sense of joy, and she sings with her heart, right? With all my heart, I glorify the Lord. When the shepherds go, um, they're outside of Bethlehem, and they hear these angels sing, and they learn about the, learn about the birth of Jesus, they head straight to the stable where they can celebrate with Jesus and his family. And then when Mary and Joseph take Jesus to be dedicated in the temple, they find this man, this elderly man named Simeon and um, another prophet named Anna, and they have been waiting to celebrate with joy at the birth of Jesus. And so like Mary and like Joseph, many of us can struggle with the stress and the fear and the chaos that surround the weeks leading up to Christmas and even after. You have all the stressors of school as the semester ends. Um, you have holiday um, traditions that can sometimes add more things onto your schedule. You've got traveling and gift buying to do. And a lot of times seasonal responsibilities can add up to stress as well as just the grief and um, knowing that there's some loved ones that may not be celebrating the holidays with you this year. And so still, amid all of those things, as Christmas comes, we celebrate and we sing with joy. We celebrate because of what Christmas means. At Christmas, God became human and lived on earth. And Christmas is a time of God's presence. A reminder that no amount of seasonal stress or sadness can separate us from the truth that God loves us and is always with us. With that, would you please pray with me? Lord of joy, thank you for bringing us back together to continue this journey through the Advent season. Open our hearts and minds to the message that you have for us and give us the strength and courage to follow through on these ways that you inspire us through this lesson. We pray these things in the name of Jesus Christ, the ultimate expression of your joy. Amen. So one way of thinking about joy is um, the steadfast, is thinking of it as the steadfast assurance that God is with us. During the Christmas season, um, we celebrate God becoming human and coming down to earth with us. We know that God's presence isn't limited to us 
just during this season of the year, or even just in the geographical location of where Jesus lived, or just through the years that Jesus lived. We know that because God is present with us at all times, in all places, um, that he is indeed always with us. Our founder, uh, John Wesley, he founded the Methodism. And when he did that, he created several um, different uh, little denominations in that. And so the largest one being the United Methodist Church that we are currently in. And when he did that, Wesley's intention wasn't to, for Methodism to become its own church. He um, founded this movement as a way for the church, his church, the Church of England, to become more holy. He taught these Methodism societies, these Methodist societies, um, that nothing special should set them apart as Christians. Instead, they should just live this holy life that all Christians should be striving towards. And so Wesley taught Christians in his churches that God should be the joy of their hearts. And so um, tonight I want to ask you one simple question. How does God bring you joy? Now, if you have a hard time answering this question, Think about different gifts that God has given you, different ways that God has been at work in your life. You can think of God-given talents or abilities that bring you joy. Um, you can think of different ways that God has blessed you or reached out to you through another person that has given you joy. Um, but you can think about the ways that God um, brings you joy through his creation different things in nature or um, different ways that you sense his presence. And so um, this Christmas break, this Christmas time, I hope that you take a moment and count those pieces of joy that you have in your life. I know that 2020 has been a notoriously negative year. Lots of challenges, lots of trials, a lot of prayer requests. Um, but as the year comes to an end and as we finish this Advent season and come together to celebrate Christmas, um, finishing up with joy, I challenge you, go ahead and make a list. Make a list of all of your um, hardships this year, all of the reasons that you have to maybe not sing out with joy this December. And then maybe even create a list of all of the reasons that you do have um, a reason to sing out with joy this Christmas season as we celebrate all that God has done and the most precious gift that he has given us through the birth of his son, Jesus Christ. And so with that, will you please close in prayer with me? God of joy, thank you for continuing to travel with us on this Advent journey. Thank you for the joy that we have because you are present with us and at work in our world. Give us the wisdom and the courage to respond to your joy by living faithfully as your followers. Amen. Well, I hope you guys um, enjoy the rest of your week with Christmas and holiday celebrations with your family. I hope you're able to gather safely with one another and that the end of this year brings nothing but more joy as we look towards the future. Merry Christmas from my family to yours. <laughs>